Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the fourth Sunday of Advent here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our theme this morning has been hanging on the wall for, for weeks. In fact, for years for Advent, these banners have been used. Behold. And behold is one of those words that you don't really use very much in, in normal language anymore. Watch. Yeah, we watch for stuff all the time. Prepare. We use that quite a bit. Rejoice all the time in church. But behold, what's up with that? Behold is a word we don't use, but for this final week of Advent, it serves us very nicely. Because it is this a powerful call to pay attention, wrapping up the emotions and urgings of watch and prepare and rejoice with a profound encouragement to understand the promises of God that flow deeply under those celebrations. So behold, this morning's call to worship and how it taps us into the glorious vein of God's grace. Our call to worship is adapted from Mary's Magnificat, that song that Mary sang as she came to understand the fullness of God's promise to her as she stood before her, her cousin Elizabeth, both of them carrying messengers from God. Would you rise with me as we turn to that call to worship? Let our souls proclaim the greatness of the Lord. Let our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. Let us proclaim that the Almighty has done great things for us, and holy is God's name. Let us proclaim that the Lord has shown strength and lifted up the lowly. Let's join in singing.
light the fourth candle of the Advent wreath to encourage us to behold. It is the candle that helps us remember the ancient prophecy from God, the predictions that told the world that Messiah would come. We light it to be reminded that Jesus is the Messiah and has prophesied that he will return. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. You promised to raise up a righteous branch, one who would bring justice and righteousness to the land so that we might live in safety. As we light this candle, kindle in us the fire of your justice and righteousness and make us blameless before you at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. Let your face shine on us and bless us that we may be saved. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Let us prepare for the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and neighbor. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God in Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. Pray with me. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Uh, the first reading today is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses uh, 1 to 11 and 16. Instead of David building a house, a temple for the Lord, the Lord promises to establish David's house, a dynasty, forever. The promise was not fulfilled the way anyone expected. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all of your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. 
and I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time when I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Paul closes his letter to the Romans by praising God because in the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, God has revealed the promised divine plan of salvation for all humanity. Paul proclaims this gospel of Christ in order to bring about the obedience of faith among all nations. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. As we prepare to hear the words and the story of Jesus, would you rise with me as we prepare for the gospel? For the fourth Sunday of Advent, the gospel is found in the story of Jesus as Luke tells it, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, a little backstory here, um, this is the sixth month of the pregnancy of Mary, Mary's cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth, when she gives birth to this child, will be the, the mother of John the Baptist. So Elizabeth is carrying John the Baptist. Elizabeth is an old woman. Her husband, Zechariah, a, a, a priest in, in the temple, both of them old people, never had children, never thought they could have children, didn't believe they could have children, until Gabriel, the angel, appears to Zechariah as he was doing his, his priestly work and told him he would have a child. So this is the sixth month. It's happening. Elizabeth is having a baby. In the sixth month of the pregnancy of Elizabeth, the same angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. That virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, <clears throat> Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And so the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for behold, you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Except for the youngest among us, if I could get the children up for a children's sermon this morning. 
Behold, your new seat. You never hear that word, behold. Does anybody ever, does your teacher at school go, behold, your homework is, to, no. We hardly ever use that word. And watch, I mean, this has been during the season of Advent. Maybe if you've been here, we've been talking about these various, let's see, you know what to do when it says, somebody says, watch, right? It's like, watch, okay, you get, okay. And if somebody says, prepare, you know what to do. You get something ready, right? Use that word all the time. And if rejoice, you know what to do when somebody says, let's rejoice. What do you do when somebody says, rejoice? Laugh, sing, have a party, yahoo! Yeah, just like that. So, you know, we got watch and we got prepare and we got rejoice. And all this, behold. It's behold in the world. Well, behold is somebody with some, with some, a really incredible story really wants you to pay attention. Or there's something amazing that you need to see. Somebody will go, behold, and they really, really want you to pay really close attention and look at what's going on. So let's, let's practice that. Behold, there's flowers in church. What? And they're all over the place. Something's happening. Behold, the whole church is covered in blue. I don't know if you've noticed that the last few weeks. Something's happening. Blue is the color of hope and excitement and, 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 and newness. Blue. And I don't know, there's Christmas trees. Behold, there's Christmas trees. Did you, have you paid any attention to the Christmas tree at the back of the church? Well, let's go back and behold that, should we? Come on, let's go. Come on, follow me. Behold, an empty pew. Oh. <laughs> behold the Christmas tree. There's all kinds of symbols here that are asking us to, to, to remember how awesome and incredible Jesus is and how awesome and incredible Christmas is. This one kind of reminds me of a little Christmas gift, and this is sort of Latin for Jesus. This is a sign that's sort of a, a cross and, and, a, and, it could, and, and a letter that it's Latin again that reminds us that Jesus is our king. And this one, you've got a cross on the, on the, on the world that's sort of in gold that sort of remember that Jesus is our king. And there's that, that, those letters, it's like the one I'm wearing here, this IHC business, is Jesus is the Son of God, and this is a cross, and there's another cross, and there's the Alpha and Omega, that G Jesus is at the beginning and at the end, and it's like, behold, Jesus is incredible. So whenever you, th I don't know if you ever run into the word behold again, but maybe you could start using it at home, like when, you know, you've made your bed for the first time ever. You could go, behold, I made my bed. Something important and it's really special gets a behold. And so that's, I wanted to introduce that word to you and get you to be ready to watch and prepare and rejoice and behold, Jesus is coming and he's been here in us in Jesus and he was here before. So behold, watch for Jesus. Thanks for coming on my journey. Behold. Your parents are waiting. Sometimes it's a message. Sometimes it's something to see. But it is, brothers and sisters in Christ, a word that we don't use very much. This behold stuff. But it's like when a powerful being is revealing an incredible reality. Behold. In the traditional versions of the story of, of, the, of the Annunciation, that's that, that episode where the angel comes and talks to Mary. That's called the Annunciation. Can you say Annunciation? I knew that you could. I'm going to make you people Roman Catholic yet. No, I'm not going to do that. But in the Annunciation, in the, in the older versions of it, the angel would say, behold, this is going to happen. This is an incredible message of God's power that's, that's gonna, it's, that is happening. Behold the promises of God woven through all of Scripture. There's promise after promise after promise that God is doing incredible things in the world. And that somewhere along the way, we get involved in, that, in those powerful things. That we get blessed by that promise. That we get heaven opened for us. We get, in, we, we, we get the, 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 the ticket stamped to be heavenly beings, to be with God and in the meantime, to live in, the, in God's love. Behold the promise of God. Behold the promise of God that we heard of this morning to David. 
It was personal and it was cosmic and it was everything in between. David had this plan, let's build a temple. And his prophet said, yeah, sure, God is with you. Go ahead and do it. And then Nathan has this dream and God says, yeah, no, not so much. It's not your time. This isn't, don't do that. Instead, I am going to build a house out of you. This promise of God's blessing. Behold, it's almost as if the, the, this, the message to Nathan that was supposed to be sent to, then to David is, Behold, look, look up here. Pay attention. Your personal plans, they're about to be changed. And they're going to make a difference in the entire world. Behold the promise of God. How David's relationship to God would shape the world. That was the promise that Nathan delivered. And then Mary. Behold the promise of God to Mary, personal and cosmic and everything in between. Extremely personal. This young woman's about to have a baby, according to this angel who says, behold, you're about to have a baby. But it's not just about her and the baby. It reaches into her family, and it has to do with Elizabeth, and it has to do with with Zachariah, and it has to do with John, and it has to do then with the entire world. The angel says, behold, this is going to change everything. Behold the promise of God to Mary, how the very profound and intimate new servanthood reality that Mary embraces is going to change the world. Behold the promise of God to you. God is able to strengthen you, we are reminded. As as Paul finishes his letter to the Romans and wraps everything up in probably one of the longest sentences of Scripture, that whole lesson this morning was one long sentence, but and it's the it's the wrap up. God is able to strengthen you. Behold God's promise to you. God is able to strengthen you. You can be part of the obedience of faith the Apostle Paul urges us to celebrate. We can watch and prepare and rejoice and and behold and declare to God this amazing glory because of what God has done for us and is doing in us. We can watch, prepare, rejoice, and declare to God to whom be the glory forever. So we know how it worked for David. Didn't build the temple, and it took centuries for the full promise to come to fruition. We know how it ended up for Mary. She gave birth to Jesus and named him Jesus. And those events are tied together by God's Spirit and God's timing and God's love and God's plan. But how does it work for us? What is that promise, the promise that Jesus was here once before and that Jesus is still with us in the Spirit and that Jesus will come again. How does that promise change us? How? There's a gajillion ways. Every Sunday we dig around on at one, but today I want to lift up one particular reality of how we can live in this promise. Because it is long past time for this congregation to behold and embrace what we are already a part of, a church. A church whose history is our shared story and whose support has been there for us in the form of the synod and before that the district and before that other entities. And how the national expression now in the ELCA and before that the ALC and before that other entities shaped us and made us and formed us and supported us and kept this place alive. Too long we have almost completely ignored our connection to our church. There are a few notable exceptions, but in the name of we can't afford it, we have neglected our relationship with the church that has been there for us, that is our history, that is our people. That phrase, we can't afford it, has cloaked this ministry and this mission and this congregation like a curse for far too long. The promise promise that changed David's life and through him the world, the promise that changed Mary's life and through her the world, that same promise rings through to us with a vision 
of how our lives can change and how this congregation can turn. With the vision of how that might be, I offer you this morning the words of our current congregational president, Rich Krikova. Uh, good morning, everybody. I, I, I wasn't expecting uh, this morning to be part of the sermon, <laughs> but I was expecting to, uh, to get up and give you a little update on uh, some of our church financial affairs. Um, I wanted to take just a minute to update you all on the status of the Mission Appeal Rejoice Renew Reach, as well as on our progress uh, during this current annual budget period. So first, let me update you on our current financial state for this year of 2017. You may remember that when we were crafting the annual budget for 2017, uh, that we were forecasting a, a budget shortfall of around $21,000. And in an attempt to close this shortfall, I came, we came to you and asked if you would consider increasing your individual giving by 10% and thereby close this gap. This strategy was only partially effective. Uh, we have seen approximately $5,000 extra dollars come in in the form of regular offering uh, due to this effort. And for that, I thank you all so much. Uh, and we also did receive about $3,000 of unexpected revenue this year in the form of rent from the school district who resumed renting space uh, from us down by the preschool, and that started in August. Then on the expense side, we did manage to save about $5,000 in assorted expenses here and there. But overall, we are expecting that we will still come up short by around $8,000 this year. Not the best news uh, to deliver, but we have had worse years, and we have had better ones too. As we are presently crafting the annual budget for 2018, uh, we're working hard to reach a balanced budget that we can present to you soon. And we're facing many of the same challenges as the last several years. Um, like the last several years, we project what we think the offering is going to look like based on what you pledge with your pledge cards and based on if you don't turn in a pledge card we base it on you know what what that giving unit has given in the past year and like the last several years we had a gap somewhere in the ballpark of fifty sixty thousand dollars I'm kind of working off memory to to close so when we see that gap we have to make decisions about what to do to close it um, we had budgeted 20 something thousand dollars to give to the synod to support the greater church. Well, if you cut that out, we're halfway, roughly halfway there. Then we look at other things that we can cut. We might, you know, we look at our the salaries that we pay our staffs. Uh, what kind of a raise might they get this year or not get this year? Um, those are the kinds of decisions that we have to wrestle with in order to achieve a balanced budget. And that's what we're doing now. Um, so pray for that effort, please. Um, uh, look at, at your own giving, see what you can do. The year isn't quite over yet. We have, we have just a little bit left. Um, as far as the Rejoice, Renew, Reach mission appeal uh, project goes, as of right now, we have received uh, mission appeal pledges totaling about $202,000. Um, this is an additional 78%, albeit over three years, that members have pledged to support our church over and above regular giving. And that is really wonderful. Um, it's especially wonderful considering that the last time we had a big fundraising campaign to, to, to do the boiler, uh, we managed to raise somewhere around $85,000 or so in pledges. And so this mission appeal is more than twice as successful uh, than our last campaign, and that's something to be thankful for and, and, and praise God for. But of course, the bad news is, is that our goals for the mission appeal um, 
were $440,000, and that was based on our perception of, of what our needs for the building and our ministry and all of that was, was for. So because we received pledges approaching half of our goal, we obviously cannot fund all of the items on our list of needs at this time. Uh, church leadership is presently involved in discussion about how to prioritize the funds that we have pledged towards the needs that we have identified. And that brings me to my last point, and that is that the semi-annual meeting um, is coming up on January 28th, and so please mark this Sunday on your calendars and plan to be there, as we will need congregational input and approval to determine the direction of the mission appeal funds that we have, and as well uh, to review and approve the uh, budget for the 2018 uh, annual budget. Um, in my efforts working with the Mission Appeal team and working with church leadership, I have had the, I guess it's an opportunity, to, to see more deeply into the finances of the church. And um, when we did the Mission Appeal, I was given a spreadsheet that showed, um, nobody's names are on this, so I don't know who gives what. But basically, every line on the spreadsheet is a, a human who's giving to our, to our church. And looking at that granular level of data, it made me uncomfortable. Um, I come to church, and I'm often uncomfortable with my own level of giving. I, I wish I could give more, and I want to give more. And I have excuses. Um, I've got four kids and a grandchild that I help to take care of. Uh, three of my four children are in college, which is very costly. Um, I've got my excuses. We all have our excuses. And, but looking at that spreadsheet, and you kind of see all the different lines, and some of them are above my line, and others are below my line, and. And, um, and I think to myself, I, you know, I pray at home about this, and I, I, I pray about my priorities. And one of the things that I did uh, a while back was I got rid of my cable television. I was paying about $100 a month for cable TV. And I thought to myself, how much value am I really getting for that $100? Um, if I quit watching cable TV, I could give more to the church. I did that, and the kids screamed for a couple of weeks, and then life went on. Um, it was one decision that I was able to make to try to realign my priorities with what I think is important in my life. And if I were to draw a line on that spreadsheet that equated to the price of a cable TV bill, it was shocking to me how many lines are below the cable TV threshold. Um, now I know you can't buy your way into heaven. I don't have that kind of money and, and none of us do. But, you know, we behold what God has done in our lives. Uh, behold the blessings that we each have. And ask yourself, What's that worth to you? Um, we're going to come in in the, in the red this year, uh, unless miracles happen at Christmas. Um, and we've got serious cuts to look at crafting our budget for 2018. Please pray about the role of this church in your lives. And pray for us who are trying to figure out the budget. And, um, and please come to the annual meeting and, uh, and help us keep this place going. I, I don't want this place to, to go negative. It means so much to me and my family, and I'm sure it means a lot to you or you wouldn't be here. Um, and that's all I have to say, except, uh, you know, God bless each of you for what you do, and I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. It is time for us to behold the real power of the promise that runs like a bright thread 
through this Sunday's lessons, through all of Scripture, and shines in the song of Mary's faith that formed our call to worship the Magnificat this morning. It is time for that song to become ours once again. The promise resonates as well in our next song, that this world is about to turn, and that God's promise in that turn is that we will participate. We will sing, and indeed it can be true if we let God's abundance flow. We will sing that our souls cry out with a joyful shout, and though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. The saving word that our forebears heard is the promise that holds us bound. For behold, the world is about to turn.
you rise with me to confess the faith that changes the world, we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take some time, share that peace with one another. As we gather this morning's offering, it is necessary and good and proper and part of our life to say to you, thank you for your support. A vibrant finish to 2017 in joyful offerings will put this church on good fitting to embrace with confidence 2018 and the priorities of Rejoice Renew Reach that those hold out for us in the next three years. You have already responded in an encouraging way to the financial ministry needs for this year, but as you heard from Rich, we're just a bit short of fully meeting those needs. I know you can finish 2017 with a healthy sharing of the abundance that God has entrusted to you. This church is about to turn. Thank you for your support for both the church and the preschool with your dedicated poinsettia gifts. It's already made the place a wonderful addition to our, to our worship space. Um, it's a cool thing that you can give to the church and also give to the preschool at the same time. It's a, it's a, a great blending of, of, of God's work in our, in our midst this season. I also want to offer you the wonderful experience of sharing with the preschool their program this Thursday night here in this space. Thank you for your support of the Giving Tree. It was quite a pile of gifts that were made ready on Friday. A few more have come in since then. They will make sure that those do get be- delivered where they need to go. But thank you for your support. Now that that giving tree has also shifted, it's shifted focus from, to some of the day-to-day supplies for the preschool. Those are the red ornaments on the giving tree. The other ornaments are for the kitchen and other um, um, material needs around, around the church. Thank you for your support of Bobby and Dave's work in the Dominican. They're preparing to head off in a a few weeks. Today's bulletin includes some specific ways that you can help out with that mission and ministry this year. Thank you also for your support of Mary Crone's uh, medical mission trip to Haiti. This week's bulletin also shares some specific ways that you can partner with that trip. And if you ordered coffee, she's uh, distributing that today as well. So thank you for your support. And thank you for your support of the fellowship team's Christmas cookie bake sale last week. It was the third best dollar amount in the last nine years, coming in at $464. Your support is incredibly necessary and incredibly a blessing for all that we do together. Would you rise with me as we bless these gifts and all the gifts that you give and come to the Lord in prayer? Guided by the light of Christ, let us pray for the coming dawn of joy, for healing, and for the comfort of all God's people.
Savior of the nations, thank you for your abundance from which we are able to respond in joyful giving. You ask us to behold the truth that you make your home here with us. Now feed us with your love that we may watch and prepare and rejoice and behold all the blessings and the promise that you bestow that our faith will shine ever new and that our lives will reveal your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the nations, thank you that your eternal reign has come into the world. Give us ears to hear your call to serve in your kingdom, eyes to see the challenges that come with that call, and hearts to behold the power of your promise that you will send us as you send us out to those who are hurting and those who are in need of good news. Let us respond with Jesus' mother Mary in our own voices and actions of praise and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the nations, thank you that you have created mystery and beauty of this, in this earth. Help us replenish rivers, lakes, seas, all the bodies of water so that plants, animals, and all humans can have life and be refreshed with good, clean, living water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the nations, thank you that you bring down the powerful and raise up the lowly. Where war rages, help us shatter hatred with forgiveness and peace. Where fear rules, help us make your all-powerful and eternal presence known in love, in peace, in justice, and in joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the nations, thank you that you remember us with mercy, as you have done for all generations. Fill us, comfort us, strengthen us, enlighten us. Make your will known and your healing known to all who are in need. Today we pray especially for the family of Miriam Hella, who died this past Friday afternoon, and others we name in our hearts before you who need your healing touch for ailments of body, mind, or spirit, relationships, or surgeries, or therapies. We name before you those we know need your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the nations, thank you that you called Mary to bear your son. We pray for pregnant women, for mothers and fathers of infants and small children today, and then especially for couples who bear the pain of infertility, miscarriage, or stillbirth. Strengthen them, heal them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the nations, thank you that you call your church to unity and service together. Encourage us to nurture the connections between the expressions of your church, regionally, nationally, and interdenominationally. Bless our bishops and their staffs, Tom and Elizabeth. Be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whatever else you, O oh Lord, see that we need, even if we cannot, whatever lies hidden, in our hearts and minds, buried within our spirits, whatever we have failed to thank you for, whatever we think is too insignificant or maybe even too much for you to deal with, help us to turn everything, everything over to your care in the words of the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to hear and remember the words of our Lord Jesus who gave us this holy supper, Hear us, O Lord, in response to the call of God, the command of Jesus Christ, and the bond of our common faith, we come to the table. In the night in which he was lifted up, 
Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In response to the love of our Creator, and remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus, our Savior, we come to the table. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. In the grapes, we have a similar reminder of God's love and forgiveness for the youngest of our assembly. They are a gift that reminds us of the same story, the same love, the same gift of Jesus to us. Following our Lord's command and responding to our need for forgiveness, we come. Please be seated. We'll be serving communion at two stations. If you need gluten-free, that'll be available at, at either station. There's grape juice in the inner ring of each wine tray if you require that this morning. If you want to remember your baptism at the font as you come to the stations, you're welcome to do that. The ushers will invite you forward from the wings first. Everybody gets to come down the center aisle. If you want to stop and pray after you've received communion, the rails are available for that as well. If you can't come forward, we'll serve you as soon as, as, soon as we can. You are all welcome here. You don't have to be a member at this church. You don't have to be Lutheran. If Jesus is in this gift for you, please come and experience that grace.
you rose with me for the blessing. May we together behold the strength that comes in this gift, in this bread, and in this wine. The promise, the love, the salvation, all we need to be God's people. Pray with me. God, for whom we wait, you come to us in the broken bread and the cup we share. Make us ready always to welcome Christ into our hearts and send us forth to be your people in the world, announcing your coming among us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God.